The Mathematics of Weight Loss and Gain, a five-step guide. First step, know your numbers. First concept, BMR, basal metabolic rate. This is how many calories you would burn if you were just standing there doing nothing all day. Not even your daily activities, not even going to school, going to the store. You were like this guy, standing here doing nothing. How does he find his BMR? Well, she's going to tell you. You're going to need to use the Harris-Benedict equation. Let's go down and see what that is. For women, this equation is this constant plus this constant times your weight plus this constant times your height minus this constant times your age. Now, for men, it's similar form, except you have to use different constants. So now we'll go to her. So what's your BMR? Well, using those stats, your BMR is 1510 calories. His is 1690 calories. But the truth is, as humans, we're not just boring. We actually do things. And to take this into account, we're going to do something called the daily caloric passive burn, which is going to be BMR times 1.2 to account for all the stuff we do. So she burns 1812 calories a day passively. He burns 2028. 20, this means that if he eats 2028 20, calories a day, he's going to maintain his current weight because he eats that much and he's burning that much just passively. But he wants to lose weight. So how do we know how to lose or gain weight? Let's go into that right now. First off, we should know the golden number, 3,500. Why is that the golden number? It's because 3,500 calories is equal to one pound. What does that mean? That means if you ate 3,500 calories right now, you'd be gaining a pound. And if you ran that much, you'd be losing a pound. But they're both pretty bad ideas. But the point is that 3,500 calories in your body means plus one. Out of your body, that means losing a pound. Let's go down and see a safer way to do it. What was your daily caloric burn? His was 2028. 20, so if he ate 500 less every day for a week, then that would mean that over the course of a week, he'd be losing negative 500 times 7, or negative 3,500 calories. And that would mean he'd be losing one pound in a week. Now, what if you want to do the opposite? What if you want to gain a pound a week? Well, then you just do the opposite. You take your daily caloric passive burn, and you add 500 to that. And that way, you'll be gaining 500 a day, and that'll be 3,500 per week. Hey, guys, I was wondering if you could help me find a formula for net calories per day. Sure, that's calories in minus calories out. All right, I'll write in minus out. What's in? In means the food you take in. What's out? Well, it comes from your daily passive burn and whatever exercise you do on top of that. Oh, I see. Okay, so the formula is given by food calories minus daily passive burn minus exercise calories. Let me just make sure I got this straight. So to lose a pound a week, I need to make my net negative 500 and to gain a pound, I need it to be positive 500. What if I just want to lose a pound every two weeks? Well, then your net just has to be negative 250 because then you're just losing half as fast. All right, I got it. Let's go to step two which is going to be be an eating expert. Since this guy can eat 15, 28 calories a day and still lose weight, does that mean he can just eat tubs of ice cream every day? Well, not exactly. On top of other things, he wouldn't feel full. Miss, can you shed some light on the situation? Tell us how calories actually work in different foods. Let's do a little experiment. How many calories do you think there are in one tablespoon of butter? Turns out to be 80 calories. Now here's how that looks. It's enough to fill up that one tablespoon piece right there. Now, how many cups of air pop popcorn do you think it would take to get that same 80 calories? It's over two and a half cups or over 40 of those butter tablespoons. Now, all I had lying around was kettle corn since I finished my air pop popcorn, but air pop popcorn is better. Now, the reason the air pop popcorn makes you feel so much more full is because it's a calorically efficient food, which means it has a high volume for a set number of calories, while butter has a low volume for a set number of calories. Now, how to choose these are to read nutrition labels and make healthy choices. But let's see a few foods right now. Let's take a look at the calories in some everyday foods. An egg is going to be 80 calories, same as that one tablespoon of butter. Now, a cup of fat-free milk is going to be 90 calories, and a slice of cheese, 60. A slice of bread, 100. And a slice of cheese pizza is going to be 280 calories. Now, just keeping track of how many calories in the foods you're eating every single day will help you meet your daily caloric goal. Now, she knows so much about calories that if we ask her how many calories in a grilled cheese sandwich and milk, she can tell us 200 calories for bread, 60 calories on cheese, 80 calories for the butter, and 90 calories for milk for a total of how much? A total of 430 calories. Thanks. Now on to step three, which is go beyond BMR. Remember that just through our daily activities, we burn BMR times 1.2 calories. But don't let that fool you because exercise rocks. Exercise is a multi-purpose tool that builds stamina, increases strength, and boosts mental health, and causes your net calories to go down. But just because you're trying to gain weight doesn't mean you should stop exercising. That's false, because you'll be gaining muscle mass and reaping other benefits. So how do you know how much calories your workout burns? Let's see. For example, the calories you burn running depends on your weight, your run time, and your speed. I've written some speeds here and how to calculate your amount of calories burned. And for swimming, it's similar. Depends on the kind of stroke you do. So I've written here different kinds of strokes and how to calculate your calories based on your weight. But obviously, we're not all runners and swimmers. So how do you find the number of calories you burn for your exercise? Well, I'll put a link in the description to a website that tells you number of calories burned for a wide number of exercises. But a big problem for most of us is how to keep motivated to work out. Well, one thing you could try is keep setting goals. If you're a runner, try to work towards that best time. If you're a swimmer, try to do as many laps as possible. And so on. Just see what works for you. Whatever exercise you do, just see what you can do to make yourself love it even more and keep yourself motivated to work out day after day. So in conclusion, there's a few key things you should keep in mind. First, exercise consistently. Then, 
Know how many calories you burn, keep track of how many calories you burn, and set goals. Now on to step four, pocket calories. It can happen at any time. You're following your diet and your friends invite you out for lunch, and the food you're having might not be very diet friendly, and so your calories start going up through the roof. Now instead of ignoring your friends or becoming a hermit, here's a different solution to that problem. His net needs to be negative 500 a day, and that equals food minus passive burn minus exercise, and he exercises worth 200 a day. So that means after we calculate it, he can eat 1728 a day, but that's more than enough. Maybe he eats 300 breakfast, 500 lunch, 500 for dinner, maybe 200 for snacks. That's only 1500. That leaves an extra 228 left over. And what's he going to do with that? That's going to be a solution to his going out with friends problem. He's going to keep those 228 calories in his pocket to apply to any meal he wants, such as lunch, and make that meal higher calorically so that his daily total goes up to 1728, which is what he's allowed to eat every day. Maybe he can tell us a little more about pocket calories. What are they? Well, it's 200 to 300 calories, you choose based on your lifestyle, that you keep in your pocket. So if you can eat 1800 a day, maybe just try to eat 1600 and keep the other 200, just in case something comes up. That way you can more consistently stick to your daily caloric goal. And if someday you miscalculate it and end up eating too much, don't worry. Keep calm, get back on track. Now let's go to our final step. Step 5. Be safe. So this guy's thinking, if a net negative 500 a day means he loses a pound a week, doesn't net negative 1500 a day means he loses 3 pounds a week? Maybe you should just work out more and eat less. Stop. That is not how it works. You're just going to end up shocking your body, you're going to hurt yourself. The important thing is that you need to take it slow. So let's see how to do that. If you're new to counting your calories or increased exercise, take it slow. Gain or lose 1 pound every 2 weeks. If you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and do 1 pound a week. If you feel even more comfortable, you can do 2 pounds a week. But do not exceed that 2 pounds a week. Going above that limit is considered unsafe. Now, let's look at a few more cautions. First, for losing weight, exercise only as much as you can take. Build it up gradually. Second, don't starve yourself. If your body is hungry, feed it, but make calorically efficient choices. And now for gaining weight, you should keep exercising. It's great for you. Second, you should eat more, but make smart choices like nuts or whole grains. Also, eat often. Furthermore, above all else, follow the advice of your doctor. Also, understand that there's other factors at play here, such as your genetics, how strenuous your average day is compared to the average person's average day, and how much sleep you're getting every single day. Remember, changing your weight is not a race. There's no rush. Just play it safe. If you ever feel like your weight defines who you are underneath, just remember, Yajaya. Thanks for watching.